namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa Good evening, everyone. Now we are learning second noble truth, the origin of suffering. <coughs> In the Dukkha Soda from Sauda Nikaya, the Buddha talk about the origin of suffering as well as cessation of suffering. So that me, uh, in that soda, the Buddha talk about two, uh, two noble truth: the original suffering and cessation of suffering. So in last week we talk about the original suffering. <coughs> Then after that, the Buddha talk about the cessation of suffering. In what pickles is the passing? Away or suffering, or cessation or suffering. Independent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. I consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is called contact. With the contact as condition, there is feeling. With the feeling. As condition, there is craving. Actually, this is a a a, a prototype of dependent originations. So, uh, and the Buddha said that. But the remainder fading away, and cessation of that same craving comes cessation of clinging. So here. The most important part, this one. This one is the the most important part. With the remainder fading away and cessation of that same craving, comes cessation of clinging. With the cessation of clinging, the cessation of existence. But what? So we have a three type of existence: uh, sense fear existence, and. Uh, Fine material existence and immaterial existence. Well, we are always talking thirty-one planes of existence. With the cessation of clinging, cessation, ah,、uh, cessation of existence. With the cessation of existence, cessation of path, or chadi. With the cessation of path and aging and death. Sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and disappear cease. So that means if there is no birth or rebirth, there be no aging and death, no sorrow, lamentation, pain, displeasure, and disappear. Everything will be cease. So this, the Buddha said that such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. Cessation of this whole mass of suffering. So this is the passing passing away of suffering. So here I just want to highlight that、uh, the Buddha in that soda. So the Buddha talk about the original suffering using dependent origination formula. And、uh, the cessation of suffering also the Buddha the Buddha talk about. Based on dependent originations, so actually similar to this soda, the Buddha is playing the four noble truths using dependent origination formula in many places in Pali Canon. Not only in these places, we also have in many places. So in other words, we can say that、uh, dependent origination and four noble truths. Are not different. The four noble truths 
encompass every teachings. So dependent origination just talk about the origin of suffering, second noble truth, and cessation of suffering, and third noble truth. So uh, we can say that dependent origination and four noble truths are not different. They are the same. But of course, dependent origination trying to elaborate uh, uh, second and third noble truth. <coughs> there are many other soda as well. Today, uh, we will talk about one of the important sodas regarding with connection between dependent originations and four noble truth. Any question up to now? No question, right? Okay, so today three satirian sotas, uh, three satirian tines. In Kautra Nikaya, chapter three, soda number 61. Actually, I have, it, uh, I have already um, seen this soda. <coughs> this is a very important soda for us. This sota talk about this soda talk about clearly explain, you know, when the Buddha explain uh, the second and third noble truths, he used a uh, uh, dependent origination formula. So the Buddha the Buddha talk about three type of satirian tines in that soda. The Buddha said that uh, there are bhikkhus, some ascetics and brahmins, page number 266, 266, second paragraph. So there are bhikkhus, some ascetics and brahmins who hold such a doctrine and views as this. What about this passing experience, whether pleasure, pain, or neither pain nor pleasure, all that is caused by what was done in the past, what was done in the past, Bobikata he do. There are other ascetics and Brahmins who hold such a doctrine and view this. Whatever this passing experience, whether pleasure, pain, or neither pain nor pleasure, or that is caused by God's created activity, because God created. This one is the second one. Another one is all that occurs without a cause or condition. So we, here we have three type of satirian tinnitus according to this soda. But of course, in uh, the first Sota or Nikaya mentioned 62 wrong views. So commentary also mentioned that. But this Sota trying to, uh, uh, trying to mention three type of wrong views. So as a Buddhist, I think that is very important to know this Sota. And I think it is encouraging for us. So the reason is, we are in a wrong path. Sorry, we are in a uh, right path. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> we are in a right path. So you can, after learning this soda, you can, you can reflect, right? What you have learned. You can analyze what you have learned in Bodhazin. <clears throat> so actually here, I will use uh, uh, Big, uh, Astamika. So Astamika wrote, uh, beautifully wrote about uh, two type of wrong views uh, in his book, A Guide to Bodhisattva, A to Z. So this is a very good book, especially for teachers, future teachers. 
It's a very good book. So actually, um, uh, instead of using the soda sign way, I think you, after explaining, uh, after I explain, then you go back and read the soda. It's very beautiful, important soda for us. As Tamika said that, uh, determinism, Niyativara is the belief that an individual's destiny is fixed and that he or she must act accordingly. But here, so according to uh, this soda, Satyrian soda, and we have a two type of determinism. So he said that determinism means the belief that our destiny is fixed. We cannot change. So we have to act accordingly. So actually this soda talk about two type of determinism. So the Buddha said there are two type of determinism. <clears throat> Number one, karmic determinism. Karmic determinism. Popekata hetu that we have learned here. So everything we experience, pleasant, painful, or neutral, is due to our karma, that is, how we have acted in the past. So that is also one of the wrong view. So if we believe that, the Soda mentioned that, whether you experience a painful feeling, pleasant feeling, neutral feeling, whatever feeling you are experiencing, that is because of past karma. That is a wrong view. Actually, it is not totally correct. It's not totally correct. <clears throat> so there are many aspects or dimensions that you experience. Some painful feeling or pleasant or neutral feeling. So if you believe that, that is because of my past karma, that is just because my past karma, that is also wrong view. Suppose you have a fatal diseases, just like a cancer. And if you think that, it is just because of my past karma. It is also wrong view. It is not totally wrong if you just believe it happened because of past karma. That is wrong view. Cancer may be caused by because of your food, because of the weather, etc. So there will be many causes. But if you just believe it's caused because of my best camera, that is the wrong view. I think, I think uh, we should read the soda. Uh, the last paragraph, uh, 266, page number 266. The last paragraph. <coughs> because... I approach those ascetics and Brahmins who hold, actually, who believe uh, karmic determinism and the Bora approach. And they say that they are right. And the Bora counter action, the, uh, the Bora counter ask uh, those ascetics and Brahmin. And the Buddha said that, um, actually, not reading, but I will maybe summarize what the Bora talked. Actually, the Bora approach then uh, what they believe is correct. So they believe that is because of my past karma. And the Bora approach them and he ask, because of my past karma, you are killing. Because of your past karma, you are taking what is not given. Because of past karma, you are committing sexual misconduct. The Buddha asks the question. So when the Buddha asks those questions, they cannot answer. So actually, what they believe is uh, every feeling, wherever you are experiencing right now, whether it's painful or pleasant or neutral, that, that is because of past karma. If so, you are, if you are taking life, if you are stealing, if you are committing sexual misconduct, etc. Is it because of past karma? No, not because of 
just bad karma. But because there are many causes, there are many causes. So the commentary mentioned beautifully, uh, according to commentary, so the people who believe commit determinism, they just accept the result. They just accept the result. They do not accept uh, Kusala wholesome deed in this present life and a wholesome deed in this present life and also Kriya Cheda. Kriya is functioning for Arahan. So here, according to Abhidharma, we have a four type, right? Number one, we Vipaka, Rasada. So according to commentary, so those, those people who believe commit determinism, they just believe we Vipaka. They just believe reset. So they forget about the other three, Kusala, Akusala, and Kriya. Sometimes we do Hosandit in this life. Sometimes we do Hosandit in this life. Aran and the Buddha, they do uh, Kriya Chaita. So, uh, whatever we experience, whether feeling or feeling, uh, whether pleasant or unpleasant feeling or neutral feeling, it may be many causes, not just because of the past karma, also sometimes because of our unwholesome action, this life, and wholesome action, this life, and because of Kriya, you know, uh, functioning, functioning. So if you, if you just believe that it is because of my own past karma, it is also one of the wrong view. So don't uh, too much depend on your own uh, past karma. <laughs> so if you are lucky, do not think that it is not just purely past karma. And you, you have done something good in this life right now. For that reason, you will you are lucky. So if you, uh, if you are unlucky, do not think that that is my best karma. If you think like this, is the wrong view. So there are many causes. Not only best karma, it is because of present, you are present action as well. So there are many other causes as well. So actually, this sort of talk about uh, how to say that the concept of dependent originations. Why dependent origination is important in Buddhism? So I think after learning these wrong views, if we learn dependent origination, it will be quite clear. As you all know that dependent origination me dependent on causes uh, the uh, effect arises. Because of this, that happened. Because of it, that's happened. So there are many factors or many causes. So just like that, if you just believe best karma, it's not correct. If you just believe just best karma, not correct. So there are many other factors as well. Question? Okay. Bhante, uh, if... Uh not everything is due to karma. I mean, we know that based on the five niyamas, karma is only one of them. Yeah, you're right. So five how niyama. do we know whether the action is due to our uh, due to karma or is due to condition? Let's say a person is enjoying a good life now. Yeah. Could, okay. Is it because of the condition? Because of karma? Can we determine that? Yeah. Actually, uh, some people, even though they are doing and wholesome things, they are enjoying their life. They have a lot of money, a lot of luxury. I think we can say that that is because of karma. But some people, they work hard. They try hard to make money, then after that they enjoy. For those people, it's not purely just best karma. They have to put uh, current wholesome actions. For that reason, they can enjoy life. So, as you said that there, we have a many conditions, fight niyama, sometimes because of food, sometimes because of uh, weather, like this. 
So there are many conditions. So we can't really determine, you know, exactly whether it is due to karma or it is due to the present condition around us. We can't really determine it, right? Yeah, we can you're only right. Explain if, you, it. Yeah, if we just believe, if we just believe that everything in this life, whether you are lucky or unlucky, whether you are experiencing painful feeling or pleasant feeling, because of my past karma. If you just believe plus, uh, past karma, just plus, uh, if you just uh, believe uh, past karma, that is the wrong view. So there are many causes, many causes, not only past karma. It is not 100% uh, wrong, but if you just believe just past karma cause, that is wrong view. So that is to say we shouldn't actually worry too much whether it is due to karma or due to condition. We just, you know, do the best in our everyday living. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So we have to believe that according to dependent originations, uh, a lot of causes, a lot of causes. Suppose if somebody has a cancer, don't just, don't just think it is because of past karma. It may be many other causes as well. Yeah. Especially for Buddhists, <laughs> we have this wrong view, right? This wrong views. Okay, so uh, Jainism believe the doctrine of commit determination. So here we have to understand determination. Our destiny is fixed. If you believe that, you cannot change your destiny, that is determination. If you believe regarding with the karma, that you cannot change your karma, that is a wrong view. <coughs> Jainism believe the doctrine of karma determination. So actually we can learn in Chula Tukakanda Soda, Majamani Kaya, Soda number 14. So in that soda, uh, the Bora met with the disciple of Nikanda Nata Boda. Nikanda Nata Boda is the, the name in the Bali Canon. Now we call it Mahavira, <coughs> the founder of Jainism. And disciples of Mahavira, they are practicing uh, set modification practices. So they are standing many hours. So they reject sitting down. So they are torturing their body and they believe that the pleasure or sukha or happiness or sukha cannot be attained by pleasure. They believe that. So when you are enjoying sensual pleasures, you cannot attain happiness. And they believe only Happiness can be attained through say torturing or pain. For that reason, they are torturing their body. And the Buddha, the Buddha asks, why you are doing that? And disciples of Mahavira and taught to the Buddha. So their teacher Mahavira taught to them, Nikandas you have done evil action in the past. Nikanda Mahavira is talking to his disciples. You have done evil actions in the past. It's all, it's all them with the performance of piercing austerities. So by practicing austerity and torturing your body and your mind, trying to stop those karma. Gamma or actions. And when you are here and now, restrain in body, speech and mind, that is doing no evil actions for the future. So actually, the teachings of Jainism and teachings of Buddhism is very close, very close. Actually, what the Buddhas believe is we have to understand our action, our karma. Actually, we cannot abandon our karma. 
So what we have to abandon is defilements in our mind, craving in our mind. But contrary to Buddhist teachings, Jainism believe that so you you can stop your karma. So by torturing your body. So when you are here and now and rest in body, speech, and mind, that is doing no evil action for the future. If you control your body, speech, and mind, then you are not doing gamma. By annihilating with asceticism or austerities, your own past actions, by doing no fresh actions, so that me, if you are torturing your body, you are not doing fresh actions. Uh, actions. So there will be no consequences. Consequence in the future. And with the no consequence in the future, there is the distraction or action. Here, action may come. So that me, if you torture your body, and you trying to control your uh, body, speech, and mind, then you are not doing new karma. So in that way, you destroy your karma. So that is the difference between Jainism and Buddhism. So the Buddha say we cannot destroy karma. So what we have to destroy or abandon is a craving, defilements. So that is a different. With the destruction of action, there is destruction of suffering. People at the back, can you hear clearly? Okay, maybe the uh, the sound system a little bit different. <laughs> okay, with the distraction of suffering, there is distraction of feeling. With the distraction of feeling, all suffering will be exhausted. So actually, here, so what the Buddha want to say is, uh, the founder of Jainism said that. By you have done a lot of past karma. So by practicing austerities or asceticisms, so you can stop those karma. So if you stop all the karma, you stop all the suffering. So uh, Jainism believe commit determination, commit determination. So they just focus uh, the karma in the past. Actually here, what the Buddha, what the Buddha taught is the, um, sometimes the karma in the past will not determine the cessation of the ending of suffering. So just like a venerable Angulimala. So he had done a lot of unwholesome karma by killing many people. But he practiced, he tried to, he abandoned defilements in his mind. So in that way, uh, he can stop all the suffering. So that is different between Jainism and Buddhism. So Buddhism just focus on defilements. Actually, the karma, according to Four Noble Truths, is suffering, the first Noble Truth. But here, defilement is second Noble Truth. <coughs> so according to this Sauda, if you believe commit determinism, so that is wrong view. And second one is theistic determinism. Aisara Neymana Hetu. It's a very beautiful name. Very beautiful name. So actually what the Buddha said here in this order is uh, this is caused by God's created activity. This is created by the God. <laughs> God knows and controls everything and thus has determined everything before it has happened. If you are lucky, that is the will of God. If you are unlucky, this is the will of God. It's already determined. It's already fixed. You cannot change it. You have to act according to God's will. So that is called theistic determinism. Some people believe that uh, wherever you experience pleasant, painful, neutral feeling, 
That is because of creation of the God. God created. You cannot change it. And the Buddha approached then. If so, if everything you experience because of God creation, then if you care in passing, it's because of the will of God? No. If you steal somebody property, is it the will of God? No. Because of your good and bad karma, your kusala and akusala. So I think, so this is a, as a Buddhist, uh, we totally reject that God created everything. So actually, in Buddhism, we don't have a creator God. So that is, I think, quite clear for us. As you all know that, uh, other than Buddhism and Jainism, so most of the religion, they believe the creator God. So actually, according to this soda, this determination is a wrong view. <clears throat> according to Buddha, both these ideas, so that me commit determinism and this determinism, are not just false, but also they are pernicious. So actually, is uh, as a Buddhist, we have to understand these are wrong view. Kami determinism and this determinism. Then, as Tamika said in his book, determinism means that the individual cannot choose one cause or action over another, cannot make an effort to change everything. And it's not responsible for anything he or she does. That is called determinism. I think many of you know that recently there is a, how to say, mass killing in New Zealand. So one of the nurses she experienced, so all the close friends die in that uh, as I want to say, mass killing. Then uh, one of my devotee is her friend, and they are very close. So um, that nurse uh, talked to one of my devotee. Uh, her husband died because of car accident recently. And one of her son is not normal child. So she's struggling. She has a lot of problems in her life. She's only sing, uh, single mother, right? Single mother. So she has to make money and she has a lot of uh, depressions. But uh, she believes that it's the will of God. The will of God is already fixed. She cannot do anything. So what she can do is she has to act accordingly. So that is a theist determination. You cannot do anything. It's already, your destiny is already fixed. So you have to act according to your uh, destiny, your fate, right? So that is a uh, form of theistic, theistic determination. <clears throat> Such a belief can only lead to, number one, a responsibility. Don't blame me, it is the will of God. <laughs> if you have done something bad, don't blame me, it's the will of God. <laughs> a responsibility. No responsibility. The next one, in antipathy, right? In, in antipathy. What can I do? It is my best karma. I cannot do anything. So, if you are unlucky, as a Buddhist, normally we always think that, that's my karma. I cannot, I cannot do anything. But if you believe, if you have such a belief, that is wrong view. It's not just past karma. Many causes. Sometimes because of food. Sometimes because of weather. Sometimes because of your friend, etc. 
So there are many causes. So by learning this soda, we can understand the importance of dependent originations. So Buddhism, we always believe that there are many reasons, many causes. Because of that, we have pleasant feeling, unpleasant feeling, neutral feeling. If you are rich in this life, there are many causes. Maybe past karma, and also plus present karma. So there are many causes. So this is a two type of determination. Question? Okay, question. Uh, hello, Pante. Yeah. Uh, in terms of birth, I think there's only uh, either you is because of determinism or is because of past karma. Is there any other reason? You mean uh, regarding with the rebirth? Birth, birth. For example, some people are born into a very rich family or royal family. Some yeah. are born into a very poor family. How can you explain that? Yeah, you're right, you're right. It is because of karma. We have to learn independent originations. Sankara. Because of Sankara, consciousness. A river consciousness. Yeah, you're right. If someone was born in a, in a new life, but of course, that's because of the nearest cause is karma. Okay, you're right. Okay, question. Bante, you see, uh, uh, karma is one of many causes, isn't it? Yeah, eh? you're right. So you're why right. then do we focus on karma in Buddhism? Oh, in terms of because uh, karma is very important. We are doing with our body, speech, and mind all the time. That's called karma. Yeah. So for that reason, uh, when we are learning in uh, sila. We learn Chonda Soda. So in that soda, uh, 10 type of unwholesome karma and 10 type of wholesome karma. So they are important. For that reason, we focus as a Buddhist. So in Nate Soda, today we are learning Nate Soda, another soda. So in that soda, the Buddha said that uh, all, the, all the Buddhas are karma vadi. So they are the one who talk about karma. So they are very important. So even we are talking about sila connected with the karma, but in the dependent origination also we have to learn karma. Karma plays very important. But in the soda, the Buddha said that to grow a plant, the ground is very important. So the ground is nothing but karma. Based on the ground, we have a seed. So the seed grow on the ground. So the ground is nothing but karma. It's very important. But here, so what the Buddha want to say is, don't think that something happened just purely because of past karma. Or in the in the case of path, of course, uh, this is the how to say the uh, the karma is uh, how to say how to say. Uh, prominent cause, prominent cause. But dependent origination will talk not only karma, together with other defilements, just like a craving and ignorance. Okay? Right, thank you. Okay. So these are two type of determination. So as a Buddhist, especially we are Actually, I know that as a Buddhist, we don't have a theistic determinism. But we tend to believe uh, karmic determinism. So actually, I can't do anything, that's my best karma. But if you believe so, if you give back uh, your effort, that is a wrong view. You fail because of many reasons, not just best karma. You, you are successful, not just because of past karma. There are many causes as well. Okay, question. Uh, 
uh, Bante, in terms of rebirth, the topic on rebirth, um, is you say prominent cause is karma, right? Yeah, right. So it's not 100% due to karma. What could be other things that could have determined your rebirth? Yeah, it's a good question. We were learned in dependent originations. Today, today. <laughs> today, today. <clears throat> okay, so thank you for the question because it's important to clarify. Uh, then only you will understand, you will have a full understanding. The next one, the Buddha want to, uh, the Buddha point out is the non causality. So that is also one of the wrong view, non causality. I hate to I to So everything happens without a cause or without condition. So actually, this is very important. There are many people who believe this one, who have such a wrong view, non causality. So this doctrine in the Pali Canon ascribed to Magali Kosala. Actually, Magali Kosala is one of the religious, famous religious leaders at the time of the Buddha, Magali Kosala. I will quote two soda uh, regarding with uh, his wrong view, non causality. In the uh, Brahmajala Soda, so we can learn Brahmajala Soda, um, para paragraph number 20. Makli God, actually, when uh, King Achada said to ask uh, the fruit of manhood, why? So, what are the benefits of the manhood? And without answering those questions, he talked about his, uh, his views and uh, his opinion. So, that is what Makli Kosala said. <clears throat> Your Majesty, there is no cause and condition for the defilement of beings. So they are defined without cause and conditions. So actually, some people have a lot of defilements, a lot of negative thinkings. And he said that there is no cause and conditions. So there is no cause and condition for the purification of beings. They are purifying without cause or condition. Some, some have a very beautiful mind, lot of loving, uh, full of loving kindness, full of compassion. Their mind is all the time pure. But they are very kind-hearted. So according to him, no cause and conditions. No causality. Just as a ball of string, wind thrown, runs, tear, it is all and rapid. Just like that, fools and wise run on, and sucker, wrong, till they make an end of suffering. So some are very, uh, some have a beautiful mind, some have a ugly mind. There's no cause and condition for that. Just enjoy life. Don't worry. So at the, end of, uh, at the end of the day, they will have the end of suffering. So that is non-causality, no cause and no condition. So I think that that is very, even nowadays, there are many people who do not believe past life and after life. They believe that we just have one life. Enjoy. Do whatever you want. So when you die, that's it. <laughs> so that is also wrong view, you know? No cause, no condition. So there are many people, they believe, you know, they have a wrong view. They don't believe, even the Buddhists, some Buddhists. So in England, there is one famous scholar, uh, Stephen Batchelor. Uh, he is a founder of uh, secular, um, secular Buddhism. Secular Buddhism. Huh? 
He doesn't believe past life. He doesn't believe after life. And he believe that do good in this life. That's all. <laughs> so actually, even among the bodies, there are some people who do not believe past life and after life. That is because they do not understand dependent originations. So actually, in, we have a past life and after life. <clears throat> there are many uh, meditators who can see their past life, who can see their past life. A uh, few days ago, I talked to one of my students uh, who is going back to Myanmar, and she talked to me her past life. So she can remember two life. So actually there are, uh, there are many people who can remember their past life. So according to this, uh, there are many people who believe that no past life, no afterlife, just enjoy life. Then if you die, that's all, no more life. <laughs> so that is also one of the wrong view according to Bodhisattva. Then another soda, Kesak Kampala soda in Gautra Nikaya. So the Buddha talk about teaching so Michael Gosala. Bhikkhus, a hair blanket is declared to the worst kind so whooping garment. A hair blanket is cold in the cold weather and hot in hot weather, ugly and farm smelling and uncomfortable. You know, hair blanket, hair garment, not good. It is the worst garment. So too, the doctrine of Magli is declared the worst among the doctrines of the various ascetics. Very pernicious, very dangerous. The hollow man Magali teaches the doctrine and view there is no karma. Whether you are doing good or bad, no karma. No deed, kriya. No energy or no effect. Even though, even though you make a lot of effort to be good, no. <laughs> so that is called non causality, ahetukadeti. Is very harmful, pernicious, the Buddha said. It is the worst. If someone believe that there's only one life, there's no cause, people are rich, no cause, people are poor. So uh, at the end of at the end of the day, then, and they were they were dying. So just enjoying life according to them. There's no cause and conditions. So it is totally contradict with the teachings of the Buddha. And the Buddha said that because the blessed ones, Arahans, perfectly enlightened ones here, not only one Buddha, many Buddhas, perfectly enlightened ones of the past taught a doctrine of Kama. So they are Kama Wadi. So they believe Kama. And doctrine not deeds, and doctrine not energy, doctrine not energy me, the effect. So they, they always say that we have to take effect, we have to make energetic effect. Yet the hollow man, Mowgli, contradict them with this claim there is no karma, no deed, no energy. So that me, Makli uh, Kodala, just focus present life. Present like me, do whatever you want. So at the end of the day, you will die and you will have the end of suffering. So that, that is called non causality. Actually, there are many people, especially in the West, who do not believe past life, present life, who believe it's just one life. Then, uh, but of course, if, if they are good, it's good. If they are not, <laughs> it's very dangerous, right? Very dangerous. 
So for that reason, uh, communist now very lucky. There's no only a few communist countries, so they have a punisher views. Even uh, so some communists, they even said that no parents, <laughs> even no parents. <laughs> <coughs> For that reason, in Kalama Soda, but that is just for the Buddhist. So, so there are three type of wrong views: commit determinism, and this determinism, and next one is non causality. So these are wrong views. So if we summarize all type of wrong views, only three things. Only three things. So after you learn dependent originations you will not have such a wrong views. For that reason, very important. <clears throat> so this sota is very beautiful. So I want you to read again, again, again. <laughs> so the Buddha said that uh, after examining their views and their opinions, so they cannot, uh, they cannot explain, they cannot explain. And the Buddha said that uh, the Buddha taught six elements and also six base for contact. Page number two six uh, two six eight two six eight and that th uh, th paragraph. But because this dharma taught by me is unrefuted and defined a repro uh, reproachable and sensual by the wise as that is and Brahmins and what is the Dharma taught by me that is unrefuted here the Buddha said that he taught the Dharma that cannot be denied by wise as that is and Brahmin what are those Dharma and the Buddha talk about four type of four list. Number one, six elements. Actually, six elements: the art element, air, uh, fire, and water elements. Then space element and uh, consciousness element. So these are five elements. Nobody can deny. So we have a the R element. So when you touch something, there is a soft and hardness. So that is the R element. Mobility or motion. So that is air element. And liquidity, water element. And uh, core and heat, that is a fire element. Nobody can deny these are the truth. The next one is the space element. So space element, you cannot experience. That is space element. <clears throat> next one is the uh, vijnana or consciousness element. So we have a mind and mind factor. So these are the dharma taught by the Buddha. Nobody can deny. So these are the truth. Next one. So the Buddha said uh, six bases for the contact. So we have the eye, eye contact. We see something that is called contact. Ear contact, nose, tongue, the body, and the mind. So these are six contacts. So I think these are very simple. We have learned in the uh, six set of six, Chachaka Soda. Very, uh, no, very easy, no, no, what I mean is very easy me, uh, everyone can experience. These are the truth, nobody can deny. The next one, what the Buddha taught is uh, the 80 mental examinations or mental explorations. So when you see something with your eye, you can have joyful feeling, and painful feeling and neutral feeling. You cannot deny, right? These are very simple and uh, truth one. Then when you hear with your ear, 
then three types of feeling. With your tongue, three types of feeling. And with your nose, three types of feeling, body and mind. So these are 80 types of mental explorations. Our mind, when you see something, we have a uh, joyful feeling, sometimes painful feeling, sometimes neutral feeling. So these are the Dharma taught by the Buddha, two fundamental, nobody can deny. These are the truth. The next one is four noble truth. Four noble truth. Suffering, the Buddha is playing what are the suffering in the Tamachaka Bodhana Soda and many other sodas. Nobody can deny. And because the original suffering, so craving, craving, then cessation of suffering, and uh, the way that leads to cessation of suffering. So actually here, uh, the most important part in this soda is three type of wrong view. Then when the Buddha talk about uh, four noble truths, so the Buddha explain uh, the first noble truths, which is the same in the uh, Tamachaka Bodhana Soda. And the fourth noble truth, the same like the uh, Tamachaka Bodhana Soda. So when the Buddha talk about second and third noble truths, the original suffering and, and cessation of suffering, so the Buddha used dependent origination. That is very important point here. So that we can learn connection between dependent originations and uh, four noble truths. So we already learned in the Toka Soda and the Buddha explained uh, second noble truths with uh, dependent origination and third noble truths, dependent originations. <coughs> So the Buddha said that we have a three type of wrong views. And in, in Gautam Nikaya, the Buddha said that because I do not see even a single thing on account of which an arising and wholesome quality arise, and arising and wholesome quality increase and expand, so much as wrong view. Actually, Having a wrong view is the cause of all and all and actions. Based on wrong views, so people are doing and all and actions. So wrong view is very important. So I think after learning dependent originations, you will be able to clear all these wrong views. If you understand clearly. <laughs> but of course, Dependent originations are not easy. So here, we have a uh, teachings on causality in Bodhazin. Number one, Kama and Vipaka, actions and its result. So this one of the causality in Bodhazin. So if you do wholesome actions, you will have a wholesome result. That is causality, cause and effect. When you do unwholesome actions, you will have unwholesome result. But here is important that not just karma, not just karma, but here just we just highlight the importance of karma. So that is a, one of the causality, cause and effect. So if you do good, Good reset. If you do bad, bad reset. It's quite clear. That is what the Buddha taught. So there is no creator God in Buddhism. You create your own destiny. If you are rich, because of your karma in the past and the karma in the present. You are poor because of your karma, either in the past or present. So that is a action and reaction, an action and reset. So that is a, the first cause, causality in Bodhism. Second one is four noble truth. 
So the first one is suffering. Suffering is caused because of second noble truth. The original suffering, craving. That is causality. And you can eat that suffering, that noble truth, by practicing the noble evil path for noble truth. That is causality in Buddhism. The first one, karma and vipaka. Actions and it reset. Second one, the four noble truths. The four noble truths is causality. And third one, dependent originations. There's also causality. Because of this, this happened. Because of this, that happened. So dependent origination also uh, teachings on causality. For that reason, uh, many uh, senior monks, they always said that uh, if we try to elaborate for noble truth, depend on originations. So it really is truth. The Buddha trying to elaborate uh, second noble truth with the arising formula of dependent originations. That noble truth with the cessation formula or the dependent originations. So that is causality. Then dependent origination can be elaborated, further explained with the conditional relation. Conditional relation means patana. In the Abhidhamma, we have a seven Abhidhamma texts. So the last one is patana. So patana talk about cause and effect. Because of it, that happened. Because of it, that happened. So it clarifying, further clarifying dependent originations. It's called like that. The first, four noble truths. Dependent origination trying to clarify uh, for noble truths. Patana or conditional relation trying to explain further dependent originations. So these are teachings on causality in Buddhism. These are very important. At least as a normal Buddhist, we must understand number one. Number one is for visit. Then if you want to become advanced Buddhist, trying to understand second one. <laughs> of course, more advanced, third one. More advanced, fourth one. <laughs> At least up to number three. Of course, fourth one is very difficult. <clears throat> but if you understand, up to dependent orientations more than more than more than enough more than enough. <clears throat> now let's study dependent originations. Dependent originations. But this is Mopara in Pali. Dependent originations, Patesa Samopara, is one of the most important teachings of the Buddha. One of the most important teachings of the Buddha. As you know that, Four Noble Truths, very important. It explains the origin of suffering and cessation of suffering. So this is a summary. What is dependent originations? It is playing the original suffering and cessation of suffering. So if you understand but there's a small bar very clearly, you will understand how suffering arises, how suffering can stop. So that is very important. So even the scholar, even among the scholars, so there are many controversial issues regarding with the uh, dependent originations. So anyway, we're trying to learn based on the sotas. And also commentary, not only the sotas, we need to also touch with Sori Maga. It is also basis for other key concepts in Buddhism, 
such as theory or gamma, mind process, the process of birth and death. Actually, when I teach Dibbana originations, I always say that this is a mind process, how our mind is functioning. Is talk about mind process. <clears throat> how suffering arises in our mind. How suffering stops in our mind. The word Patisasamopada is popularly translated as a dependent origination. This is the most popular one. Bhikkhubari also translated this one in his book. It is combination of two words, patecha and samopara. Patecha means dependent upon or because of. Samopara means arising or originations. Because of this, that arise. Because of this, that originate. To what? Dependent on some factors that factor arise. <coughs> so that is a dependent origination. <coughs> Some scholars, they, they prefer dependent arising. This is also very simple, very good one. <coughs> it is translated in different ways by many scholars. Some translate dependent originations then dependent arising, dependent co-arising, condition arising, condition genesis, causality, the law cause and effect, etc. There are many <laughs> variety of translation of this one because this is a, the most one of the important teachings in Buddhism. For that reason, many scholars so they trying to interpret uh, their own way, their own way. So there are many controversy issues in Buddhism. <clears throat> the reason is we have a different type of dependent originations in the Sota itself. So, so dependent on people and the places and time. So the Buddha used different type of dependent originations. For that reason, it's really uh, confusing. So anyway, if you understand thoroughly uh, the basic fundamental uh, concept of dependent originations, it will be very helpful. So actually, uh, when I teach uh, dependent originations, one of the students asked me, uh, under why you are teaching dependent originations? Actually, um, my topic is meditation. Why am I teaching dependent origination? <laughs> Nothing to do with the meditation. But actually, dependent origination is crucial in your meditations. You attain enlightenment because you realize dependent originations. So later I think you it will be clear. The Buddha said that because of not understanding dependent originations, we are going around sansar. But the moment you realize by your wisdom, through uh, with your own your wisdom, then you can stop samsara. That is, the aim of meditation is to stop suffering, right? So if you realize dependent originations, then you can stop suffering. That's very important. That's very important. Don't forget that this is a, a very higher teachings, very higher teachings. Not, not, not about sila. Not just about Samatha. <laughs> it's, it's not just about jhana. It's higher. It's a vipassana. Vipassana.
มหาฟักกพาลี from Winya p i t i k a and the first three s o d a of Udana Pali of k o d a g a n i k a y a record how the Buddha reflect dependent originations. So these are important s o t a s in Udana. Then I will, uh, then I will uh, give my note. Then you can go yourself. According to those uh, s o t a s and after the Buddha attained enlightenment, he spent forty nine days. In other words, he spent seven weeks near the Bori tree, enjoying the bliss of Nibbana. Everybody know it. Forty nine days. It is very coinciding with the the idea. Uh, the idea, right? forty-nine days. Be b e v e r l y you need to, as a b o d h i you need to share the merit uh, after forty-nine forty-nine days. I eh? think uh, I don't know. <laughs> It's coincident. <laughs> so the Buddha enjoying the bliss of Nibbana. Seven days after his enlightenment. So the Buddha in March. From the state of deep concentrations, according to the Soda, and reflected on the dependent originations. So clearly, the Buddha already became the Buddha. Then, for seven days, he enjoyed the bliss of Nibbana. Then, that he emerged from that concentrations. Then, he reflected dependent originations. So. Based on dependent originations, he attained enlightenment. Then the the s o d a said that at the first watch or night, uh, he reflected dependent originations in direct order or arising formula. So we have a n u l o m a in Pali, direct order or arising formula. Dependent on A. B arises, depending on B, C arises, depending on C, E arises, etc. So they are dependent on arises. For that reason, we call it arising formula. So actually, it should be called a n u l o m a m i d i r e c t order or f o r m a l order. The second watch of the night. Later, we will dis- uh, we will learn in detail, but just in brief. The second watch of night, he reflected dependent origination in reverse order or cessation formula. If there is no A, then there is no B. If there is no B, there is no C. Just example, no? just example. <laughs> so that is the cessation formula because cessation of A, B, C. Because B arises based on A. If there is no A, no B. So that is called cessation formula or reverse order. Then at the third watch or night, uh, he reflected dependent origination in both direct order and reverse order. The example dependent upon A. B arises, so that is a direct order. If there is no A, there is no B, so that is a reverse order. So that is a, a how to say a simple example law dependent originations. Understand? So I hope I hope. Actually, it's very not difficult, but. For that reason, Venerable Ananda taught to the Buddha in Mahanidana Soda, Mahanidana Soda, the Soda that I have already sent it to you. Alia I sent uh, translation of Mori Wash. So later, luckily I found out of uh, translation of b e k u b o r i So actually, I have been uh, googling for a long time. 
to get translation of Begubori, but I didn't get. But luckily, uh, last night I got it uh, Begubori translation, so I changed. Mahanidana Soda is very important to talk about dependent originations. So in that Soda, Venerable Ananda taught to the Buddha. It is wonderful, Lord. It is marvelous how profound this dependent origination is and how profound it appears. And yet, it appears to me as clear as clear. People say that dependent origination is very, very profound, very difficult, but to me, very easy. Just a piece of cake. <laughs> Just a piece of cake. So actually, the commentary said that, of course, as a Sotapanna, the one who became Sotapanna, and also who have learned teachings of the Buddha for a long time, for Venerable Ananda, it is easy. It is easy for him because he himself uh, realized uh, dependent originations. So for those, you know, um, uh, the one who became Sotapanna, there's a one Fali's uh, stanza. So I always explain Yang Kenchi, Samuriya Diamond, Sapanda, Nidora Diamond. That is dependent originations. So uh, Yang Kenchi, Samuriya Diamond, wherever, uh, wherever is uh, whatever has the nature of arising has the nature of cessation. That's also dependent origination, only one factor. So for those who become Sotapanna, they realize dependent originations. So that is a dependent originations. So because this, uh, this nature has the nature of arising, it arises, that's one factor. Because of that, it also has the nature of cessation, realize, you know, realization or enlightenment or awakening. So that is dependent originations, only one factor. <laughs> but in the case of um, Venerable Sariputta, sorry, sorry Upadesa, Sariputta to be, and he met with the Venerable Asachi, and he listened only one verse, only one verse. Then that talk about only two um, noble truths. That's also dependent originations. So I think uh, later I will talk about it later. So here, uh, of course, commentary mentioned that I see Sodapana as the one who learned a lot of Dharma from the Buddha, for him, dependent origin is very easy. But the Buddha said that, do not say that Ananda, do not say that. This dependent origination is perform, appears perform. Actually, that is very perform. For that reason, Venerable Ananda uh, have a very difficult to to become a rahan because he doesn't understand <laughs> his level is to ask, to understand dibana originations just sort of bana level he couldn't understand father for that reason he had been for a long time as a sort of bana right even uh, before the first Buddhist council he tried hard right he couldn't understand causing effect, causing effect. But he said that, very easy, look easy. <laughs> the Buddha said that, no, don't say that, it's very difficult. It perform and appear profound. The Buddha said that, it is through not understanding and not penetrating this doctrine that this generation has become like a single ball of string, very complicated. Kaba as with the black tanger, like a coarse grass, 
and then better to pass beyond woeful state of existence and samsara. Because people do not understand dependent originations, because of that, they are going around samsara. In that way, they are experiencing a lot of suffering. Important. <clears throat> So that is a Mahanirana Soda that I have already already sent out. And the Buddha, actually in that Soda, the Buddha said that without clear understanding or dependent originations, even the one who attain jhana, deeper level of concentrations, can be clouded with the idea of self or soul. Actually, in Buddhism, uh, it is important to clear the cloud of the ideal self and the ideal soul. That is very important. Only for those who become Sotapanna, they can clear this one. Even for those who attain jhana, they have, they have the ideal soul in their mind. So for that reason, understanding dependent Origination is very important. So here, understanding me, not just learning from the teachers, not just reading, but your own understanding through practice. That is dependent originations. The moment you understand, my arises, disappear. Arises, disappear. If you realize by yourself, your own with your own wisdom, you understand dependent originations. So the, for that reason, it's very important. In Mahati Padovama Soda, Venerable Sariboda taught to the monks and referring, quoting what the Buddha taught. And he said that the Buddha says, he uh, he who see the dependent origination see the Dharma, and he who see the Dharma see the dependent originations. Realizing the Dharma, realizing dependent originations, they are equal. So the Buddha equate uh, understanding the Dharma and understanding dependent originations. I think. By looking at this uh, statement, so we can understand importance of dependent originations. Actually, this is a very similar to what you have learned from Wakili Soda. And Wakili said that, uh, uh, actually, he, he was, I think you already know that, he was ill and he was living in Savati. The Buddha was staying in Rajagaha. 200, about 200 kilometers away. So even though he is very ill and he wants to see the Buddha, for that reason, with the help of his colleague, uh, his friends, he came to Rajakaha. Then um, when he met with the Buddha, the Buddha said that, is there any regrets or remorse in your mind? The Buddha asked. And uh, Venerable Wakili said that, I don't have any remorse, but I have only one. Without seeing the Buddha, I will not die. If I'm dying without seeing the Buddha, it will be a great remorse and great regret for me. And the Buddha said that, in that Wakili. <laughs> Why do you want to see this foul body, ugly body? The Buddha said that, no? One who sees the Dharma sees me. One who sees me sees the Dharma. For in seeing the Dharma, vaguely one sees me. And in seeing me, one sees the Dharma. So here actually, one who sees the Dharma sees me. One who sees me sees the Dharma. So the Buddha equate. So actually it is, the Buddha just want to say, actually I think, the Buddha just want to say that if you want to understand my teaching, if you understand me trying to learn the Dharma, if you realize the Dharma, you will understand who I am. I think that is very important. 
I think um, maybe because of this idea, I don't have any uh, uh, strong strong desire to go to Boracay. <laughs> because uh, I have been learning the Dharma, right? So by reading the sodas, I was meeting with the Buddha for many times. So that is what the Buddha said. But of course, it is also... Um, in other words, the Buddha also encouraged his disciples to go and see four places. That is, uh, for spiritual, I want to say the urgency. When you visit uh, Buragaya, you will uh, experience, I want to say the uh, coolness in, under the Bori tree like this. Right? So anyway, uh, don't think that two sotas contradict. Do not think. We shouldn't think in such a way. So in this soda, the Buddha went to enlighten vaguely. And for those who have advanced understanding, actually seeing the Buddha and visiting Buragaya is not important. <laughs> Only teachings or practicing the Dharma is important. That is the, uh, the highlight of this soda. But the, in the, the other soda, the Buddha said that as the disciples of the Buddha, they should visit four places. That is for other origins. <laughs> Don't think that they are contradict. No. Depend on the Buddha. Sometimes the Buddha say uh, different people, different time, different places. So we have to understand so we have to understand in such a way. <clears throat> so here, I want to highlight that uh, dependent origination is very important. <clears throat> Actually, this is a, uh, the note, my professor, my professor from Sri Lanka. So when I was learning in Sri Lanka, I studied under him. And I like his teachings a lot. Very enlightening. And he has waivers in Bali Canon. He always say that I cannot find this in the entire Bali Canon. <laughs> he is very quite sure of himself. <laughs> and he said that the Buddha often mentioned that in order to attain enlightenment, one has to understand four noble truth. So that is uh, in Kodikama Soda, Sounda Nikaya, Soda, uh, chapter 56, Soda number 21. Kodikama Soda, and also in Mahaprinibbana Soda. So when the Buddha arrived, Kodikama, he taught to the monks. So, uh, you and me are going around sansara because we do not understand for noble truth. If someone understands for noble truth, then they will stop sansara. But in another soda, Mahanidana soda, <coughs> the Buddha said that uh, one has to understand dependent originations when you want to attain enlightenment. It seems contradict. It seems contradict. I think for you right now it's quite clear, right? For noble truth, dependent originations are not different. They are the same. They are the same. And he said that there are two versions of the first salmon or the Buddha. Two versions of the first salmon or the Buddha. One is found in Dhammachaka Bodhana Soda. We have learned the first salmon. So in that soda, uh, the first salmon or the Buddha is full noble truth. And second one, the other version is found in Ariya Priyasana Soda, Majjama Nikaya, Soda number 26. So two versions of the first salmon. So actually, when I 
Lantis, I'm confused. <laughs> but only after learning the sodas, quite clear, they are not different, they are the same. So even the Buddha was talking to a group of five monks, the Buddha may have explained Four Noble Truths using dependent originations. According to Ariya Priyasana Soda, what the Buddha revealed to the five minds is dependent originations. In that Soda, the Buddha said that he faced the problem of path, jati, and ponder over it. And he trying to find solution. He uh, attain enlightenment, his enlightenment, path uh, depends on existence. Because of existence, you have a path or rebirth. If there is no existence, no path. <clears throat> so that is uh, what the Bora taught in Ariya uh, Priyas Nasoda. So of course, if you read two sodas, it seems contradict, but if you understand really, not contradict, they are the same, right? I think that uh, to understand uh, teachings of the Bora is very important. <clears throat> in one of the discourses in Samadha Nikaya, the Bora said that he realized four noble truths through the knowledge of dependent originations. It is nothing bad. He attained enlightenment by understanding four noble truth. So that here, I think uh, we should go back how the Buddha attained enlightenment. So actually I have been explaining for many, many times. First, he attained the four jhana. <coughs> jhana. So based on jhana or deep concentrations, uh, he recall and he inclined his mind to remember his past life. He, in, in his past life, he might see a lot of problems. Those problems caused because of craving. And he realized in his mind. Then after that, he inclined his mind to remember or to recollect the life of other beings. The beings go to unhappy destinations because they have done a worse and deed. Some, some beings, they, have, uh, they were born in happy destinations because they have done good things. So beings are going sansara because of craving. He understand by himself. So based on that, actually that is dependent originations. That is dependent originations. He realized with this mind because of this that happened. Because of this that happened. So for that reason, for those who recollect their life, their previous life, they have unwavering faith to the triple gems. As I earlier said that, one of my students who attended Soda class here, together with you, she can, uh, she can recall, you know, her in two life. So now she went back to Myanmar because she went to meditate. She went to uh, meditate for a long time, for one, maybe about one year. Because of that, you know, she has a unwavering faith. So what I want to say is, if we can recall our past life, then we will have a unwavering faith to the triple gems. So we ourselves know, right, our past life. In that way, we firmly believe in the triple gems. Then we apply the Dharma. <coughs> so here, uh, one of the soda, actually, I have to find out the soda. <laughs> And he said that uh, the Buddha realized Four Noble Truths through 
knowledge of dependent originations. <coughs> Question? Okay. Question about that. Hi, Ban. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Bante, thanks for the sharing. Just now you mentioned about the uh, arising order and also the reverse order. Okay. If I interpret rightly, the arising order is referring to noble truth second. Yeah, you're right. And the reverse order is the third noble truth. Yeah, you're so right. So all in all, this dependent is linked to the four noble truths. And yeah. I had to do it that way. Yeah. And the fourth one, which is the Eightfold Path, that is a solution to the cessation of yeah. suffering. Yes. So I, I, got, I got the linkage right, right? Yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right. I just yeah. want to make sure. I, I'm okay. Yeah, you're right, yes. Okay, thanks. So the fourth noble truth is the solution. For that reason, uh, first we have learned suffering. So what is suffering? Uh, what the Buddha taught regarding with the suffering, the first one. Now we learn the original suffering. So later we learn the cessation of suffering, that is Nibbana. Then only after that, we will learn the Noble Eightfold Path. Then only you will understand why Noble Eightfold Path is important. Because it is solution. Solution to end our problem. Not only the problem of samsara, but the problem in this life. If we practice the Noble Eightfold Path, the more you practice, the more you can reduce the amount of suffering. But of course, as we have the body and the mind, we still have a suffering, bodily suffering, but at least we can reduce the amount of mental suffering. Okay, good. Then, many soda in soda pirika deal with dependent originations. So there are 300 sodas in the Nidanavaka or Sounda Nikaya. So actually, the soda, I, ha I have shared two soda with you. That is the first two sodas in the Nidana Waka Pali. So Nidana Waka means dependent originations or causality. In the two texts of Abhidhamma Pitaka, Vipanga and Patana, it also talk about dependent originations, deal with dependent originations. So as I earlier said that, conditional relation or patana, trying to elaborate uh, dependent originations, trying to elaborate cause and effect. So in this way, we can find causality or dependent originations in three tipitaka. So in the Vinayapitaka, Mahavaka Pali, According to BTS, uh, Palita Society, Mahavaka Pali is the first, the first book in the Vinayapitaka. So in that Mahavaka Pali also, we learn uh, the history of dependent originations. The most extensive analysis of prayerful formula so actually, this is the most complete one. We have a twelve-fold formula. It's found in Panya Bumi Bumi Nadesa of Wisori Mag. Panya Bumi and the base of wisdom. So in Wisori Maga, it is the largest chapter in Wisori Maga. So Wisori Maga trying to explain dependent origination in detail. So whenever the commentary went to explain dependent originations, it referred to Visodhi Maga. 
So if you read with Sori Maga, you understand commentary explanations. So you cannot find a, a comprehensive explanation in other commentaries other than with Sori Maga. So for that reason, with Sori Maga is important. Meditation master from all Buddhist schools, Tiravara, Mahayana, Vajrayana, they explain dependent originations. Without this, it will not be complete. It is important for meditations to analyze the state of mind. So when you meditate, then you will rely by yourself these dependent originations. For that reason, it's very important. Uh, in Myanmar, we have a, a famous meditation method called Moko. It emphasizes dependent originations. It explains using uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, technique, a lot of technique. So, Professor. A bit naike, Oliver bit naike said that in the Mariamika, uh, Mariamika Karika, you see, written by Venerable Nagatuna, especially state that the essence of Buddhism is nothing but Patisasamopara. So, this is uh, the essence of Buddhism. So, you cannot find in any, any other place, any other place that you can find only in Buddhism. The entire text is based on theory of causality. For that reason, uh, it's not really easy to understand uh, uh, Venerable Nagarjuna book. It's very famous one. For those who are learning dependent originations, so they have to learn his book. The Buddhist theory of causality is keeping in the most prominent place among the teachings of the Buddha in both Theravada and Mahayana, also in Vajrayana. Actually, Vajrayana is included in Mahayana. So here, uh, what I want to highlight is dependent origination is very important. So if you understand dependent originations, you will understand mind process. Why a lot of problem? Why, uh, how those problems can be solved? So that is a, uh, actually here, the most important point in dependent origination is, uh, it especially deal with sansara. Sansara. Why a lot of problem? Because of existence. Because of existence, you have a path. Because of path, then you have a lot of follower problem. So that is the, the aim of dependent originations. So as I earlier said that, um, to summarize what is dependent originations, there's only two things. It talk about the original suffering. And it talk about cessation of suffering. So at the same time, uh, it, it trying to answer some of the difficult questions, just like a theory of karma and theory of path and rebirth. For that reason, it's very important. So I think uh, we will learn about theory of karma when we are learning dependent originations, and also we will, will learn uh, the concept of rebirth and connection with the karma. So. We'll learn next week. Question? Okay, one more, one question. Okay. Sorry? In meditation. <coughs> Sorry? Because just now you mentioned that uh, in Myanmar, people have like certain technique to go into uh, DP, which is dependent origination, in their meditation. I'd like to know about the practical method. Oh, actually, uh, they, yeah. they use the chart to explain. Uh, maybe 
normally I do not use that charge. It's a little bit complicated. <laughs> so anyway, maybe I will try to see whether I can explain using that charge. Yeah, maybe you can hmm. guide us in that method. Maybe in Sorry? one of the you can guide us in that method in one of the you know session. I think if you learn the soda, you don't need to know that they are their method. Okay. You automatically know it. But of course, this is a... Uh, but you will make us easier, you know? At least that's okay, a formula. Okay, I will try. <laughs> yeah, I will try you. my best. Thank you. So thank you so much. So let's close our lessons. Yo vara tam bhava ro manu chesu sakya muni bhagava kata kecho paragato bala viriya samangi Tansu katan saranatamu pemi yatachat maninja masokan dama masangkata mapati kulan Madurami mampagunan suri patan Dhammami mansaranatamu pemi Yatachade namaha palamahu Chattu su su si su puri sa yu ge su Atta cha po gala dhamma da sa te Sangha mi man sa ra na ta mu pe mi Satu 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 Kona bi wen